Welcome back to the PSOC Challenge. Time is running out as these three teams race to build the coolest, fastest, and most PSOC-y robot possible. Stay tuned as we dive into the challenges each team faces on their road to victory. Almost there, half time. Four hours left. It's going pretty well. We have a uh, line sensor working, the motor's working. Um, we have our special component we picked up, the ultrasonic sensor working. Okay. Um, we're getting there with the color sensor. We had a little problems initially with getting the um, colors to read back properly, but we're getting okay. that finally adjusted. We're trying to go uh, as much hardware as possible, so okay. we want to try to limit the CPU, um, whether that be with a digital implementation or an analog implementation, but we want to show off the flexibility of that. You don't even need, technically need a CPU in a PSOC. I'm used to working in embedded firmware. Mm -hmm. I'm used to working in hardware around these embedded programmable chips. Mm -hmm. In this case, usually microcontrollers. PSOC just took all of this stuff, Verilog, uh, firmware, all the analog components, and put it into a single chip and allowed me to be able to program it. So you have your robot assembled. Yep. And you have all the hardware put together. Yep. It's just stuffing the, the software into it now. That's right. Any clever things you're doing with the PSOC? Yeah, um, using the PSOC for the color sensor, driving the whole thing. And okay. uh, getting all that to work has been an interesting challenge. It's just having trouble with saying. Anything you think you'd do differently now that you're yeah. under the way? What would you do differently? Not use a CDS photo cell for the uh, color sensor. It's green, okay. Green, okay, I mean, it's serious. Green's okay. Blue, green. Yeah. What would you have done instead? A photo transistor. Okay. Something a lot faster. Oh, okay. Because CDS is really slow. Yeah, okay. And so when you're switching between red, green, and blue, you get bleed over from the others, so you have to wait. Oh, okay. Wait for the cell to cool, you know. Well, yeah, makes your choices, you takes your chances. You That's know? right. So I've been I've been participating with Max, watching the the tweaking algorithms, which have some problems. Watching what you guys are doing on the extra features, listening to our chairman's advice on uh, speed sensing and closing the loop in in direct speed sensing from the wheels, and I sense that we're at a crossroads here. I think we're in an awesome position with the rest of the group, um, but we could lose that and so we need to figure out where to focus our efforts we've been a little bit too spread out so what do you guys think max i think um we need to tune our control algorithm our pid coefficients and we need to do it with a reliable um, battery voltage so we need to measure battery voltage at least and then um figure out how fast the batteries are draining see if it's see if it's actually feasible to use fully charged six volts uh, from the batteries and characterize that way or if we need to do something else closed loop by measuring motor speed or something and I think it's it's good to implement the extra sensors we don't have to use them in our control algorithm algorithm we could use them for um, other goofy stuff we could turn on lights we could display the value on the screen just to show that we achieve it they show up in our schematic they make our team look good but I don't think adding a bunch more inputs to the control system is going to make things any easier. I'm feeling like it's ready for a party time. <laughs> Robot party. So there's, uh, there's 30 minutes left and my fingernails are going to get shorter and shorter as the time gets closer and closer to zero. Uh, we still have a lot of integrating to do, putting all the pieces together. That's always the most difficult part. But I feel pretty good. Like We've got really good pieces. So each piece is working really well and uh, if we get them put together, the system should work really well. I'm nervous. I'm excited. I'm having a blast. So um, Todd finished implementing the uh, light sensor. Uh, the color sensor, so we're going to test it on the course right now um, and see if it works. Let's check it out. Oh yeah, it sees red with an R, alright. And here we have blue. Oh, it's saying green. I need some tweaking. Todd, you failed. You're failed. off the team. What's green? You're off Nerd Island. 
I had problems with mixing green and cyan. I simplified the problem by just taking cyan out of the picture. <laughs> <laughs> the information that cyan was going to give us about the course was, uh, you know, useful. If it becomes really useful, I can put it back in. But to the color sensor, it has a hard time telling the difference between the two. The sensor's kind of high. We need to adjust the mechanicals, I think. So we've got like basic functionality. We just need to step it up a little bit more. Oh, cool. We close in 30 seconds. Turn the oh my god! Okay. Jeez, oh, what about you guys? Oh, no. Are you going 200 miles per hour? Yeah, this is almost 300. Done! Done. Stop! Hey, Stop! Hey, go, go. Close your laptops. The teams have overcome adversity, and now they will have to face their shortcomings. Join us for our next webisode where each team will present to the judges and break down the specifics of how they built their PSOC powered speed machine. I'm quite confident. Like I said earlier, I have an awesome team and these guys are just hitting home runs right and left.